Hello and welcome to Science with Stina. Happy Monday, everybody. We are doing some technology adventures, trying out the computer here. So hopefully you all can hear me okay. Um, if you can give me a thumbs up, that would be awesome just to know that I'm not talking um, on mute or something. Uh, but yes, welcome, welcome. And today we have quite the mystery. Um, and you're more than welcome to join along. But of course, we always like to start out knowing where you're tuning in from and what grade the students you're with are tuning in as. Oh, words are hard. What grade are the students you have with you who are watching today? Um, so we will be solving a little bit of an estuary mystery here. And so to do that, um, I've, I've got a couple samples. Um, if you read in our event page, um, I'm trying to know, I think we want to keep it kind of a mystery. So if you want to get some solutions ready, uh, check out the Facebook event and you can see what solutions you need to uh, do a little bit of a hands-on experience um, with me along the way. So um, what you'll need is salt water and some, I have a test tube. Um, if you don't have test tubes lying around your house for whatever reason, um, I also did some experimenting. I made a test tube out of packing tape so it totally works. Um, really just a nice thin vial um, of some sort, maybe a flower vase, uh, something along those lines will be just fine. And then something like a pipette or uh, something to slowly pour a liquid into. So uh, other than that, oh, food coloring is also something you'll need. So uh, once you have those materials all set and good to go, you're ready to help me solve this estuary mystery that we have today. Uh, Harbor Wildwatch, we, we actually do a lot of water quality testing. Um, some of those partnerships include that with the South Sound Surfrider Foundation. We're part of their Blue Water Task Force, and that monitors fecal coliform in different areas. Um, so while we do some real live water testing out, out and about, today we're doing a little bit of mystery water testing. And I have some samples from various places. Uh, Rachel and I like to, you know, get our boots on, go out to Donkey Creek, collect some fresh water from that habitat, and then pop into Gig Harbor Bay to grab a second sample. Um, we like to, you know, maybe <laughs> if we tide, time the tides right, uh, take a little kayak out under Narrows Passage, get our third sample, and then of course a nice super salty ocean sample from the Pacific Ocean. And we like to, you know, check in on how those how those water samples are doing, but we have quite the conundrum on our hands. Uh, we didn't label them. So we have these different solutions and no labels. And so today I'm hoping that you can help me with the power of density, figure out which sample is which. Now, uh, typically when we're in a classroom, we like to do some brainstorming about how we would figure out um, the identity of each of these mystery samples that uh, we so silly forgot to label. So you might think uh, hmm, we could look at a microscope and take a look at if there's any organisms living in the water. Or um, a lot of times people want to smell it. Um, and that if you're, I don't know that my sense of smell is quite tuned in enough to know the difference. Um, maybe if I was a dog or a salmon, I could do it. Um, some people suggest tasting the water, which in science, I never recommend that you just taste samples, but I like where that's going because uh, there would definitely be something you'd notice if you were to taste these different samples. Uh, and I'm gonna reach over and grab a marker really quick. All right. So if I were to taste Donkey Creek, I would probably notice that it's fresh water, right? I wouldn't taste any salt in it. Uh, if I were to taste these other two, I know that Gig Harbor Bay and Narrows Passage are both coming from what we know as an estuary. And estuaries are a mix of fresh water, salt water, put that together. So not quite as salty as the ocean, but definitely not fresh like a creek. All these Puget Sand. Another term for the Puget Sound is the Salish Sea. I have a map here. The Puget Sound is the southern part of the Salish Sea, so it includes 
um, all the way down to Olympia and up and around. And then if I think of the Salish Sea, we add the Strait of Georgia, which would connect out to the Pacific Ocean. And oh, the Strait of Wadapuka <laughs> connecting to the Pacific Ocean. And then the Strait of Georgia up in Canada. And all of those bodies of water together are the Salish Sea. But this lovely Puget Sound area is indeed the second largest estuary in the United States. It's a pretty special, amazing habitat. Um, and yeah, we need, we need good quality water in there to make sure our creatures are happy. So we have our estuary samples. And then of course our ocean sample. So if I were to um, maybe take a drop of each one of these samples, I could easily figure out which one's which by watching evaporation. Not that fun. Um, but if I took an equal drop, I'd notice there's no salt left over from the Donkey Creek sample. Maybe just a little bit of salt left over in our Gig Harbor sample. So it's kind of hard to see. Um, that's because I'm taking the sample pretty close to the creek. Um, so I know that there's more fresh water than salt water. Narrows Passage is going to have more salt than that Gig Harbor Bay sample but the Pacific Ocean would be have the most salt. And so we have this nice gradient of um, different densities in our samples here. And we're gonna use that today to figure out which one is which. And I promise it will be more fun than watching a drop of water dry. Uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna use that food coloring so we can actually stack the water. But first I wanna tell you a little bit about density. So we'll come back to this page. But density is probably a word you've heard before. We can break it down into its definition, uh, which is an equation. It would be the mass of something divided by the volume. So we'd actually get a number for the density. Um, I like to simplify this and think of density as the amount of stuff divided by space. So if I were to say, we could figure out the density of your house. How many people are in that space? If I think of the people as stuff and your house as the space, you can figure out, okay, I have, well, I have one person. <laughs> We're gonna have three people in that nice space. Okay, there's that density. Now I can change the density of my house by, well, not this time, but let's say there's no social distancing orders and I invite a bunch of people over to my house. Let's say I double the amount of people. Woohoo! We're having a, oh, I wish we could have a party. We're having a nice group. We've doubled the density by increasing the stuff. We didn't change the size of our house. We just changed the amount of stuff in the house. And so, by increasing the den the um, by increasing the mass, we increase the density. Because if I think of you know. I think of it like we're all packed in like sardines. Like we have to stack people up to the ceiling if you invite too many over. So more stuff, more dense. Now I could decrease the stuff and say, send everybody home and be all alone. I now have more room to move around in my own dance party. So by decreasing the stuff, you decrease the density. So there's a direct relationship there of if I increase this top variable, I increase the density. If I decrease it, I decrease the density. So what happens if I change my space? Um, a little difficult to do in the case of a house, but let's say I cut this house in half, and now I have all three of these people <laughs> squashed over to one side. Right? By decreasing the space and not doing anything to our stuff, I increase the density. That's, again, think of all of these people squashed over to just one part of that space. So we're now talking kind of more of an inverse relationship. So by decreasing space, I'm going to increase density. So see how those kind of flips? Um, if, I, if I do flip it, say I put my hard hat on and I double size of my house. Now all three people woo, 
have plenty of room because I've increased my space. I've now decreased the density because there's more, more area. Um, if you want to do this uh, experiment, you can you can do a density in your stomach with cookies, right? If I eat one co cookie, my stomach will not be as dense as if I ate 10 cookies. Okay, maybe that's not as healthy. But um, another kind of thing is if I change these variables equally, so say I double the space and I double the people, these are now going to be equal density situations here. So if I equally alter those variables, we get the same thing. So that's kind of a little bit about density. And if I connect that to our drops of water and think about the drop of water as my space and the salt as the stuff, I know that Donkey Creek is going to be the least dense because it has the least amount of stuff in that space. And the Pacific Ocean is going to be the most dense. So I'm going to write us a little note about that. And that perfectly sets us up to figure out which one of these samples is which. So I'm going to take, I have added an equal amount of food coloring. I'm going to kind of push us all in here. Okay. So I have, oops, a mess. <laughs> um, I have my four samples and I've added food coloring to each one. And I've added an equal amount of food coloring to each one because I know each one of these vials or each or food coloring has a density. And so five drops of red, green, blue, and yellow. Again, we didn't label them, so we have no idea which one's which. Um, for ease of doing this, I'm going to pour a little bit into a smaller cup so I don't have to reach my pipette down to the bottom. And we're now going to take our test tube and I'm going to actually stack this water. So I don't know, let's start with yellow. I'm going to just take a squirt of that. It's nice for the first round. I don't have to worry about the sample mixing. If I were to just take this and try and stack, let's say we're going to try the blue with the yellow and I just squirt that in. Okay, that didn't work out very well. I now just have a green sample. It's going to be the mixture of these two. So this is some fun color theory now when yellow and blue make green. But I have no idea which one is more dense or less dense. So when I add these samples, I actually have to be a little bit more careful. So I'm going to take that yellow again. Kind of rinse it out, I guess. Okay. And then I'm going to tilt my test tube or tilt whatever um, vessel you're using that's kind of thin and cylindrical. And I'm almost gonna like lay it on its side. And now when I add this other unknown sample, I'm gonna do so very slowly. And by slowly adding it, I'm ensuring that it's not just mixing right away. And then I'm gonna tilt it up very slowly as well. And oh, I notice that the yellow is on the bottom and the blue is on the top. And I'll hold that against a white background. That is pretty cool. I now know that my yellow sample is more dense than the blue sample. Now, I don't necessarily, I guess I can't make any conclusions. I can't say, okay, that means yellow is the Pacific Ocean and blue must be Duck Creek because we have two other samples we have to figure out. But I definitely know that yellow cannot be Donkey Creek and blue cannot be the Pacific Ocean. We have some little variability here and there, but we're gonna have to do some more tests. So I'm gonna dump this out and we're gonna try yellow versus green and we can see. Now, this time around, I'm gonna be a little bit better of a scientist. We're gonna start taking some notes. Um, I'm gonna circle the ones that are more dense. So if I tried yellow versus blue, I know yellow is more dense than blue, so I'm gonna give it a big circle. Now I'm gonna try yellow 
versus green. I'll scoot these out of the way so you can see those notes. Cool. All right. We can make some predictions, of course, as good scientists. Which one do you think will be more dense? Where's that over here? The yellow or the green? I guess we really, we don't have that much information to know either way. Okay, so when I add my second sample, I'm gonna tilt that test tube or whatever vial. I'm gonna either slowly pipette or slowly pour in my second liquid. Might count to like five as I do this. And then I'm gonna slowly tilt that up. Ooh, okay. I notice the yellow is indeed on the bottom again, which means the yellow sample is more dense than the green sample. Now, you might be thinking, okay, Stephen, you keep adding the yellow first. Is that, does that have an impact? If I were to pour this out and do the opposite, well, what do you think? If I put the green in first, is my green gonna be on top or bottom? Is it gonna be more dense or less dense? Let's find out. I add that yellow sample. Slowly. And then tilt that up. Even though I put the green in first, that yellow is still more dense. So the more dense sample will always go to the bottom. That is pretty cool. So for my next test, the yellow versus red, it's not gonna matter which order I put in yellow versus red. So that's kind of a fun, a fun test to know that density is not changing in these. I'm not like secretly adding more salt or shifting around things. So we're adding more fresh water. Um, if I added more fresh water, that would make the density less. If I added more salt, that would make the density more dense. Um, but density is not changing in these samples. So I can expect that the more dense sample is always going to go to the bottom. So let's test that yellow versus red. And tilt that over. Any predictions? Kind of see. Ooh, I like on the screen. I can notice that the red is staying on top. Boom. Now in this case, the yellow is again more dense than our red sample. So I'm curious, can anybody holler out what is the identity of our yellow sample here? If you said yellow is the Pacific Ocean, you are correct. Uh -oh. <laughs> we'll do some labeling now. Hello. Awesome. Now, we still have our blue, green, and red sample to figure out. So at this point, because yellow has been the most dense in every case, um, we really don't know anything about the identities of the blue, green, and red samples. So looks like we're going to have to do some more water stacking. Let's try, I don't know, the blue. Let's work our way down the line, I guess. If I look at the blue versus green. This one, I will say, is the trickiest waters to stack because the colors are the most similar. And so I'm going to be very, very careful not to mix that. So again, slowly adding that second sample and then slowly tilting that up. <gasps> Looks like the green in this case is more dense than the blue. Again, I'll point out that we added the blue first. Doesn't matter which order we put it in. The more dense sample is always going to shift down to the bottom. So blue versus green. Green is more dense. We now know something, right? Can we figure out an identity? Okay, maybe not an identity yet, but I know that this green sample can't be Donkey Creek. And I know that the blue sample is not gonna be the nearest passage. We're still gonna have to do another test. 
to figure out more. Let's try blue versus red. to contaminate those too much. Okay, slowly adding the red sample in. I'd be curious, if you're trying this at home um, and you don't have a test tube and a pipette, um, I mean, I'd like to know what materials are you finding that are working for your, for your experiment here? Okay, tilt that up. Uh-oh, I had some mixing on that one. That's okay, that happens. I'm gonna try just adding some more red. I can see there's kind of a purple on top. So just focus a little more slowly. And then slowly tilt up. Okay, now I can see that layer a little bit better. If I really want to get a good idea, I can add even more. <laughs> Try not to get that mixing. Slow, okay, there we go. You can see this purple color is where I've definitely maybe added my sample a little too quickly, but I still notice the reds on top, which means blue is more dense than the red. We now have another Lose more dance. All right. Oh, I think we might get to do some deductive reasoning here. Okay, so my blue sample is more dense than the red sample, but it's less dense than the green sample. I know that it's, again, not Donkey Creek, but, wait, I have to think about this for a second. Okay, so blue cannot, it's not as dense as yellow, so can be narrows. It's also not as dense as green, so now it can't be narrows because we get harbor. Um, and then it's more dense than red, so it can't be Donkey Creek. I can figure out that the blue is likely our gay harbor base sample. So again, thinking about that, blue is more dense than one, and then less dense than two. So more dense than one, less dense than two. I would say Cape Harbor Bay is definitely blue. Now, looking at our, if we know the identity of our blue sample, I think we also know the identity of our other two. I can make a pretty good prediction that if the green sample is more dense than, or more dense than blue, and then if red is less dense than blue, I'm going to predict that red is indeed Donkey Creek and green is Narrow's Passage. And with that, we can now test this prediction. I think that's, that's kind of fun that we get to, you know, use some deductive reasoning and then put it to the test. So let's make sure that that is indeed the case and that I'm not... <laughs> camera shy and just uh, jumbling up here, but we'll find out. So let's test that green versus red. And they slow and steady. Add a little bit more so you can get a nice thick layer that you can see on the screen. And then slowly tilt that up. All right, just as we predicted, the red is less dense than the green sample, which connects to what we just made a prediction about. And with that, we've solved the mystery. Now, there's something fun that I want to do before we're totally finished, and that is to do a rainbow stack. Um, I think that because we have different densities of these different samples, it's going to be possible for us to stack all four. Now you might be thinking, uh, Stina, why didn't we just do that in the first place? Uh, I wanted you to play with water and stack it. So um, yes, we could have just gone straight through all four, but we had to like, you know, build some anticipation here. 
uh, really stretch out the mystery. So um, I just know based on that, um, when we had the mixing with the red and the blue, um, I think if we can avoid mixing by having the more dense sample have to travel underneath the other samples, I'm gonna start with my most dense sample and work my way to the least dense sample because I know there will be less mixing if I do that. And I think we're gonna get a pretty good rainbow stack. So uh, if you're trying this at home, we would love for you to share um, your, your stacks of water as you, as you help us solve this mystery today. So um, if I'm thinking about the most dense, that in my case is gonna be my yellow sample. So I will take some yellow. And then we're going to work our way to the least dense. So our green sample is next. Again, slowly tilting that over, adding a steady stream of the green. I'm going to, I like, I like a nice thick bar. So I'm going to do double pipettes of each. And then I'm going to add the blue, which according to our results, is Big Harbor Bay, a little bit more fresh water, it's not as salty as the Narrows, definitely not as salty as the Pacific Ocean, but more salt than a creek, like Donkey Creek, which we determined is our red sample. I'm going to add the red in, and we're doing double pipettes. Okay, moment of truth. Slowly tilt that over. Oh, I had some mixing again. <laughs> that blue is sneaky. Is that a little more red? Okay. Well, it's not the most perfect rainbow stack I've ever done. But I can absolutely see that yellow, green, blue, red. You could definitely try and do the reverse and see if those waters <laughs> shifted down um, with the, if I did yellow last, which actually, let's go ahead and try that. Um, I'm kind of running out of room, but if I add a little bit of yellow, according to density, it should sneak its way down to the very bottom. Oops. Let's see if that worked. I'd say it did. Pretty cool. Pretty fun. So with that, thank you so much for helping solve our estuary mystery today. Um, this is a fun experiment that I think really gets across the idea of density really well um, in is a little bit more fun to do than math problems, although math problems are definitely as important. Um, so hope that you learned and had fun, and we look forward to uh, tuning in with you again next time.